Uh, still the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Chris Kende Wandu, uh, the detribalized Nigerian, joins the conversation this morning. Chris, it's good to have you join us. Good morning, my people. It's nice to be here. Kofi, how are you doing, my brother? Oh, uh, fine. <laughs> are you still with us in the country? Have you left? Because uh, I heard you say jackpot on the other side, Chris. I don't know. <laughs> if, uh... It's good that I said I wanted to shoot because you want to jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did hear. I did hear. <laughs> We're still there. Yeah. All right, All right Nice to see it's you, nice Chris. Good morning to you. Morning. All right, Chris, let's start off with the punch now. Uh, look at the punch newspaper. Boundary dispute worsen insecurity. 6,000, I beg your pardon, 676 killed in state. Boundary disputes worsen insecurity. 676 killed in state. 444 houses raised in communal clashes in Eboyi, Kogi, Cross River, others. Now, I would be very surprised if Cross River didn't make the least for, you know, communal clashes. Federal government addressing 86 cases, security expert. Lawyers blame governors and can decries rising in security. Senate promises 2023 jumbo security allocation. Hmm. Okay. Away from uh, the board headline and the riders you have underneath, you have Ikura Madu's detained 82 days daughter, six kidney donor. I mean, I felt, you know, uh, very, very, very sorry for her. I'm hoping that someone would you know, answer the prayer. Akari Dolu apologizes to the cleric over Muslim Muslim tickets. And federal government begins tax recovery from 2,000 mining firms. Passport insurance increases by 38%. More Nigerians relocate. I mean, it sounds like Kofi is just in the spirit. He's seen everybody jack buying, <laughs> if there's anything like that. Five killed in Ifanyu Bas convoy attack, and that's what the police said. Another sad report there, and there's a picture of, you know, the flood and the rain that happened in Lagos. Lagos flooding rescuers recovered two corpses and saved nine. Unfortunately, Labor Act aviation workers issue a 14-day ultimatum. And gridlock traps Lagos Ibadan motorists and passengers for 16 hours. Imagine, uh, you know, been in the spot for 16 hours. Students to barricade expressway and carpet in Gige Adamu, uh, talking about the strike action, but that's it this morning on the punch. All right, let's move on from the punch uh, to the next paper in two, of course, that happens to be the nation newspaper with these headlines. The big one there, PDP in distress, says Otom. Uh, Benue governor blames Atiku Wike rift on leaders, and some will ask him, I mean, he was in a position to recommend the zoning formula uh, for the party, uh, not him personally, but he chaired the committee. Some would say, well, um, he was not the only one in that committee. I guess, I guess we'll be able to uh, throw more light on that. Uh, but this is a quote uh, cited by the nation with that headline. It says, uh, there are certain internal mechanisms that should apply to conflict resolution within the party. All right, that's a lead one from the nation. But it's curious to see, uh, Mercy and Nida, um, uh, Chris Kendi Wandu, that um, the nation has um, made it a uh, point. It's like they've taken their, their editorial team and they're camped in front of the PDP house, <laughs> Wadata Plaza, because the headlines almost every day is about PDP crisis, PDP crisis, PDP in distress, PDP crisis. That's the editorial decision of the nation. They're entitled to make those decisions. Uh, a pardon, I bear no grudge against anybody, says Iyame, all right, former governor of Taraba State. INA cancels one million voter registrations, ineligible entries voided, I'm sure, and that is no surprise for me, if you ask. Jump insists on no biometric, no examination policy. The score scaled as NAF jets hit terrorist hospital. 2023 EU cautions politicians against hate speech violence. Will they hear? Uh, APC campaign council accuses Obi of playing ethnic card. All right. Uh, that's an interesting one coming on the front page of the nation. Mercy. Away from the nation, uh, let's quickly take a look at the Nigerian Tribune. Nigerian Tribune says, Flood heats equity, Niger and Lagos. Nine rescued as building shrinks, two adults missing. School fences collapses, killed two children in Lagos. 
and passengers stranded as uh, the road caves in in Bida. Again, you find federal government and ASU court adjourns proceedings till Friday. Government's action condemnable, that's what Falano is quoted to say. And two policemen, two aides, one other killed in Uba's convoy attack. That's according to a police report. Ekoramada's daughter publicly appeals for a kidney donor. Pay 10 million to family of slain Kogi PDP woman leader. That's what Ekoramada's court orders the federal government. INEC should operate free from outside pressure, EU tells the federal government, advises politicians against violence, hate speech. Aviation workers protest in Lagos and shut down operations at Kano Airport. FAN disconnects the NAMA facilities over 500 million naira debt. And no king has right to claim uh, paramount say over others in Ondo. Uh, that's what the government is saying. Uh, that's the much we can take this morning on Nigerian Tribune. All right, let's move over from Nigerian Tribune. We'll go to Daily Trust and some interesting stories on the front page of Daily Trust. Um, it gives prominence to the aviation sector crisis, um, not the PDP crisis, uh, like the nation calls it. Uh, with this leading story, aviation workers shut airports over new law. Aviation workers shut airports over new law. Uh, riders to that insist banning union, union activities illegal issue 14-day strike notice, passengers stranded, minister denies smuggling in new clauses, little small matter of uh, some new clauses in new aviation law that says, um, you know, affects the uh, formation of unions and their activities, you know, as far as aviation sector is concerned. We have more from Daily Trust. Um, parents cautious as school resumes in states. Uh, two swept away, nine rescued as flooding hits Niger Ekiti. Lagos. We'll look at that in depth on the program later. Uh, FG versus ASU court adjourns hearing to September 16. Concerns over non assent to Nigeria startup bill. Uh, OB to Tinubu presidency not turn by turn. OB to Tinubu presidency not turn by turn. We'll activate our structures in 774 local governments for OB NLC president uh, with golden opportunity. To address challenges, LP chair. This is the story on the front page of um, the Daily Trust. And I'll begin with that story as I introduce uh, uh, Chris Kendo, our guest mm -hmm. analyst for uh, this segment today. Once again, good morning to you, Chris Kendo. Um, uh, is the presidency not turned by turn? I mean, uh, uh, Peter Gregory B. Uh, may may want to feel it's not turn by turn, but isn't this what we call rotation? You know, and federal character and all that. Um, what do you say to this, Chris Kennedy? I wonder. And also, please speak to uh, the NLC saying they will activate their structures for the Labour Party in the light of the uh, nation's labour laws that said says the labour unions cannot use their funds, uh, uh, you know, in support or their dues in support of a political party, any political party. So over to you. Yes, um, that brings to mind uh, the slogan "Emilokon." Emilokon in Yoruba <laughs> means "It's my turn." So. I tend to, to, to some extent, agree with uh, P2B on that. But don't also forget that uh, the same thing that uh, P2B is trying to deride uh, is um, putting uh, uh, more uh, attention to when he says, when uh, yeah, it has always been the saying that is the turn of the Southeast. So, turn by turn is a two edged sword, can um, cut anywhere depending on who is holding the dagger or the knife. Um, but for me, it's not uh, about the personnel. It is the ability for anybody to be able to perform. Yes, within the Constitution, uh, uh, equity, fair play, justice uh, is uh, well enshrined. I mean, the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has amended, where it is believed that every part of this country should be given the fair share to partake in the political uh, activities and uh, rise to any position in Nigeria. But when you now look at the situation since 1960, 1966 to date, and you look at the lopsidedness of leadership in terms of presidency in Nigeria, then 
it is good to ask yourself where exactly should the presidency go in 2023? I'm not speaking as somebody from the Southeast, but for equity and fair play, you may just well say the Southeast should have a run at it. Uh, but uh, good enough, we have uh, the way it is presently. The top, um, the three top uh, political parties have people from the what I would call the three type of with which Nigeria was built uh, at independence, the north, the southwest, and the east. Now, it will be uh, in neighbor is from the east, Africa Bubaka is from the north, and Bola Ahmed Tinubu is from the southwest. So, it is less for Nigerians to see and look at whoever they think has the high credentials to be able to do the job and do the need for by electing the person in 2023. Then coming to the statement made by the president of uh, Nigerian Labour Congress, uh, Honorable Waba, uh, Waba, yesterday, um, don't forget that the Labour Party is owned by the Nigerian Labour Congress. So whatever they can do is their party, and they are not the first, the first of its kind. If you go around most uh, developed countries, you have political parties owned by labour uh, labour organisations. So if they say that they're going to Within the 774 recognized local government in Nigeria for their candidates, all well and good, it's within their rights, uh, in as much as uh, they don't are not doing anything outside uh, outside the law. For me, I don't see anything wrong with that. It's a political party, they have never shy away from saying that it is a political party and they're going to do everything only possible to support their candidate in the forthcoming. General election. Yeah, but 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 sir, the, the labor laws um, talk about the fact that you can't use the the dues of and the, the the resources of of the unions, the labor unions. In this time, in this country, we have two main unions, NLC and TUC, to fund any political party. People who pay but, dues. But, uh, are you people who pay dues? All the members who pay dues have they asked each and every one of them? if they want to support a particular party. I'm sure that is the thinking behind But even without analyzing whether that law is right or not, the law is, is there. Uh, uh, you, you can't take the funds, the, the resources of yes. the labor unions Go, to be in, in politics. You, you, you can't. Kofi, the, the, the labor, Nigerian Labor Congress have not said they are going to use the funds uh, of members. You don't know where they're getting their funds for. They have sponsors, they have people that support them and the rest of them. <laughs> so, uh, so are you so telling me if the NLC, if the NLC think... president makes a phone call that, that or drives his car or sits in his office using the AC there to make calls right. to mobilize members, Could you're be, telling me that he's not using resources of the NLC to okay. fund the political I'm a graduate party. Of... I'm asking. I'm Could asking. Be. Could be, I'm a graduate Kofi, I'm a graduate of law, so I'm speaking from the point of law. And in law, what would ride with is evidence. If you have such evidence, then you bring it forward. But if you don't, then it's always. So I'm, 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 I'm asking you, so is it possible the for the not... NLC to canvass for votes for and to support the uh, Labour Party or any party without using their resources? I, I totally agree with you, except to bring that evidence forward. You can still, they can still. No, it's a, it's a question. Result. No, I didn't make a statement, it was a question. <laughs> Can the NLC use its resources to support a political party without... Can, can they support a political party without using their own resources? Yes, well, as I said, they own the party. That, Niger that Labour Party is their party. So how do you support your party if... if, 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 if well, there's a lacuna here. I think it's there for students of law or anybody that feels... Uh, I agree by that to take it to the court. And uh, I think we may need a court interpretation. But as far well as I'm concerned, the Nigerian Labour Company have not said they are going to use those funds. And so I leave it at that. Until they say so, then oh, well, like, don't forget that we also have issues of diaspora um, um, donations that have been running riot since Peter B also traveled abroad. And the man came out to say, no, I have not opened any account. Nobody's donating any money. But that have also been trading videos of recent. We are President Muhammad Buhari in 2015 also solicited for foreign donations from Nigerians in diaspora. So this thing is neither here nor there. But I think for me, the most important thing is that let us look at the character of the uh, candidate. Look at what they have been. All these uh, people here and there wouldn't help us. I want them to tell us what they can do. 
And based on that basis, that the Nigerians should be able to make a, a holistic choice on who they think should be should be in a better position to rule or to govern them or to be the president of Nigeria or even governors when it comes to 2023. Well, um, let's move away from that discourse and take a look at the punch now. And on the punch, it talks about boundary disputes, worsening insecurity, uh, 676 killed in state. And so why is it that, you know, the government has not had a handle over, you know, this issue of boundary dispute and communal clashes? Messi, over the world and since time immemorial. What causes conflict and war in most countries is always boundary. Go and read history. So there will always be boundary disputes because land in itself uh, has become a, a, a vital, uh, what would I call now? I, I don't know how to put it. But um, so uh, people are always reaching out, grabbing and grabbing land. Land seems to be the major resources that human acquire across the globe, which is why if, you, if you're going to get, to get a land in most parts of the world, you have to pay through your nose. For Lagos, for instance, in some places, land goes for as much as one plot of land goes for as much as uh, one billion, two billion, uh, and that's a fact. So uh, it's expected that as uh, population grows, there's always a tendency for people to expand. And in doing that, they are going to need land. So that is why we always have issues of boundary. Even, um, um, don't forget, even part of the war that is going on between Ukraine and uh, America, apart from the political and the rest of them, it's also an issue of land use. They saw that a few years ago, um, Russia went into uh, Ukraine and cornered some areas of uh, Ukraine. And presently, they're still trying to dominate by cornering as many places as possible, as many towns and states as uh, 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 lands as possible. So it has always been problem. But my own, my own worry here is that I think our problem is in, with Nigerian Boundary Commission. I, it, I don't think they have been doing what they ought to do. And this is why you always have these clashes, especially there's always the ones between states and states, and there's a communal one. For example, the one that is in, uh, going on in uh, a boy. So, uh, hundreds and thousands of people have been killed in a boy, particularly over land dispute. You, are, you also spoke about uh, um, um, crossing that is also the issue. Then there's always uh, perennial um, boundary clashes between Kogi and also Enugu states. So it has always been the problem, and I think that the the, the federal government through the Nigerian Boundary Commission can be able to do a much more revised, very sure that we have the delineation of most of these boundaries so that everybody knows where they belong to. But by the uh, large use act, um, the Nigerian Large Use Act. The power over land is vested on the governors of the state, apart from the one that federal government land. But the power over land is vested on the governor of the state. He is the one that can issue and revoke licenses when it comes to land. But when it comes to state to state, now, then that's this will. And seeing that number of people that have been killed, about over 600, I'm, I'm sure it's even more than that. I, I believe these are the ones that just, even in my own village, in Ubo, in Imo State, I know what we go through in we go through land. Just for my own small village. In fact, yesterday in our local local was that where I saw is where a man and a, another man we are fighting over land and the rest of them. It takes the leaders within my community to go to the land and not try to say one say I've been farming this since 1973. This one say I've been farming. So issue of land has always been and will always be uh, a problem. But on a on a much larger scale, um, the Nigerian Budget Commission should be able to do look at what they have presently and see whether there are areas that. Uh, that need, we need a little adjustment. Then, put to that also, you remember maybe that some states in the south-south and the southeast have been having serious disputes over um, land, particularly River State and Bayesa, that recently, um, some few years back, the Supreme Court had to come up with a judgment where certain oil wells where that was in dispute was given to River State. And, and so, it has always been like that and will always be, but um, the government should be able to do the need for every particular point in time to make sure that this does not just uh, spill over into communal clashes, killing, and the rest of them. Remember what happened between Nigeria and Cameroon on the issue of Bakasi? Till now, um, Cameroon is a fully in charge of Bakasi after we seceded that place to Cameroon. 
um, during the Oluchengo of passengers. Uh, but, but, but the case is, is, is being, I think there's plan to revisit that particular case, you know, uh, the International Court of Justice, that particular issue. Uh, yes, I know. I know that. Um, yes, I know that there's an attempt, but don't forget that uh, the International Court of Justice have already given a ruling that um, uh, Cameroon has taken uh, this thing. We, you know, to go just within a second, we need to go through um, history to uh, to understand how that happened. That issue of Bakasi. From what I read, what happened with Bakasi is that during the civil war, the federal government promised. Couldn't find their way into this into the south uh, south as cities presently during the war, and there was an agreement between Nigeria government and and the government of Cameroon that if they can allow Nigeria to come into Cameroon to to fight the Biafrans and the rest of them, they are ready to see this the, that place and they allowed it and they came into there. I am not too fully um, into that history, but that was part of what we had. Okay. And over the years, the government refused to do the need for until the passenger came in and um, um, just made sure that they gave the All right. plan to... Um, well, Chris Kane, what an interesting analysis from you this morning, and um, we're so glad to have you uh, join us. So we look forward to having you the next time uh, we see what happens with the issues we've uh, raised so far, but thank you. Yes, thank uh, you. Kofi, not before I go, just a second, before I go. Yeah. Um, you make a fundamental uh, observation on the issue of... Uh, um, the nation and it comes to PD. Um, I, I have to warn as a journalist now that most of our colleagues are going into the fray of politics and being partisan. Yes, we know the owners of um, the nation newspaper, but for me personally, as an individual, it's the last paper I ever read now, uh, unlike before, because it's so obvious that um, they are just out to um, be attacking and attacking, and they should know that. We, as members of the court, uh, uh, estate of REM, are supposed to be as neutral as possible, irrespective of the owners of uh, whatever establishment. So that observation you made this morning was very, very calm, and I just say I should put in a word there. Right. Have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time, Chris K. And Wando, a chartered mediator and conciliator. We'll take a break, and when we return today, 13th September 2022, we look at what happened today in history. That is the break, actually, and we're back on the other side.